The Vape Passion Show, episode 89. In this episode, an e-juice review of Doc Holiday by LYX Vapors. The London Fire Brigade supports vaping over smoking. A huge study shows that vaping can prevent 6 million premature deaths. An old school vape review of the UD Igo W Plus RDA. Removing paint from stainless steel vape gear. And how to refill the Enjoy Prefill tank. Hey, welcome back to the Vape Passion Show. I'm Alex, this is episode 89, and I'm recording this on Sunday, October 7th. If you're planning on buying a vape product anytime soon and you want to support the show, go to vapepassion.com vendors and buy from one of those links. There are more than 50 popular vendors listed. I'll get a small commission for referring you, but it doesn't cost you anything extra. And if you don't want to listen to this whole show, most of the segments will be published separately in the next few days. So I hope you all had a good week. Uh, mine has been busy, like usual. Uh, this weekend has been different for me, though, because my wife and daughter went to Colorado Springs to visit her family for the weekend, and I stayed home to get some work done. So I've had most of the weekend to be productive, uh, and my brother actually came over unexpectedly with some pumpkin beers yesterday, so we had a few beers, played some co-op of that new game Cuphead on the Xbox One, and I had a really good time, and it was nice having a little break like that, because I, I don't usually get breaks like that. Now, I had to kick him out a little early, though, so that I wouldn't squander my time when I should be using it to get work done, but it was still a lot of fun. And while we're on the topic of gaming, I know a lot of my listeners are gamers. Um, have any of you played Cuphead yet? That game is so good, but also so hard. If you're not familiar with Cuphead, it's a new indie game designed in the theme of 1930s cartoons. The visuals and audio are just amazing, and I've never seen a game so unique and beautiful. So anyway, there are two types of levels in this game. There are run and gun levels, like Contra or Metal Slug, and then there are boss battle stages. There are no checkpoints at all in this game, so if you die, you have to start all the way over from the beginning. And those levels, they're not short or easy. Um, you can spend an hour just trying to beat one boss. It's frustrating, but fun at the same time. Cuphead, it's only $20, and I think it's totally worth the price. If you've played it, let me know your thoughts. And have any of you played it co-op yet? You'd think it would be easier with some help, but it's not. I think it might even be harder, because it seems like the difficulty adjusts, and also there's just so much going on on the screen that it's so easy to get the players mixed up. Okay, enough gaming. So, as for vape stuff this week, I got a couple of things. First, 8Vape uh, came across my vlog from a few weeks ago where I talked about the drama that they had to deal with in regards to the Goon 1.5 RDA. They wanted to show their appreciation by sending me some goodies. And they sent me two Goon 1.5 RDAs, so how awesome is that? That's really cool of them to do, and I'm really appreciative. Um, I've been liking the Goon 1.5 so much that I had actually planned to buy two more of them, so that was a really nice surprise. And since I got those for free, I decided that I would give one away, so keep an eye out for that giveaway soon. And I got a couple of other things in from my good friend and subscriber Dave. He sent me a couple of RDAs for my old school vape review segment, which I'm bringing back this week. And he also sent me a Smoke V8 stick, which Dave didn't know before he sent it to me, but this was actually something that I really wanted. Um, I even had it in my cart a couple of weeks ago, but I ended up not buying it. And I've been wanting this because I have a smoke TFV8 tank, which this device is usually packaged with, and because I wanted something slender but powerful. And that's the nice thing about mech mod tubes, except I don't like to carry around mechs. So this is perfect for me. I've been using it nonstop since Friday, and I love it. There's really nothing special about it. It's just a 40 or 50 watt regulated device with a, a firing button and an internal battery. But that's all I wanted, so this will be my new walking to work device. Okay, well let's jump into the topics this week. Let's do an Aegis review of Doc Holiday by LYX Vapors. This was sent to me for the purpose of review by LYX Vapors. You'll find the link in the show notes if you want to check them out, or go to vapepassion.com slash LYXDH. So they sent me Doc Holiday, which is from their classic e-juice line, which I believe is designed for beginner vapors. Doc Holiday is a traditional tobacco. It's 70 VG, 30 PG e-juice, and comes in 0, 3, and 6 milligrams nicotine. The smell is interesting. The first smell I get is sweetness, but not like a candy sweetness. It kind of reminds me of a vanilla flavor. That seems to be the dominating smell. I also get just a hint of tobacco. It's kind of like a pipe tobacco smell, but not extremely rich. I'm vaping this on the Icon RDA built at 0.28 ohms on top of the Smoke Alien at 100 watts. This has a very unique flavor. It's just like the smell, but still not what I was expecting. The vanilla taste is dominating, but it also has a slight tobacco flavor. The tobacco flavor is not strong, and it's not rich. 
It doesn't make me think of a cigar or pipe tobacco. It seems almost like a mix of mild pipe tobacco and maybe even a little bit of cigarette tobacco. I know when people think of the taste of cigarettes, they think of a gross taste, but this is actually pretty good. I think that vanilla flavor does a great job in this mix. It's really smooth too. The flavor is smooth and thick and that six milligrams nicotine, it's not harsh at all. So yeah, this was a surprise for me. Um, I like it and I think this would be pretty appealing to a smoker just getting into vaping. So if you're interested, go to vapepassion.com slash L-Y-X-D-H so that they know I sent you and uh, or check the link in the show notes. It's a little pricey at $19.99 for a 60 mil bottle, but that price isn't too bad for a quality e-juice. Okay, and now some quick news out of the UK. The London Fire Brigade supports vaping over smoking. So the London Fire Brigade just recently published a blog post announcing that they welcome Public Health England's support for electronic cigarettes as a method to help smokers quit smoking and to help prevent smoking-related fire deaths. Dan Daly, the brigade's assistant commissioner for fire safety, said that their statistics show that there have been over 3,580 3, smoking-related fires in the last three years, while there have been only 15 caused by electronic cigarettes. He also mentioned that the London Fire Brigade has no recorded deaths or injuries caused by vaping um, or equipment, vaping equipment catching on fire. Although he did say that there is some risk of fire from people leaving their e-cigarette charging while overnight or for extended periods of time. So he does suggest charging only when you're awake and near your device, when you're near your device, and that users should always use the correct type of charger for their vape. And I believe this is the same fire department that supported the use of electronic cigarettes last year too, saying pretty much the same thing, that vaping is much safer than smoking as far as fire risks go. And I looked up some stats, and it looks like cigarette-related fires cause nearly 1,000 deaths, 3,000 injuries, and cost nearly $7 billion per year in just the United States alone. You'd actually think that more fire departments would be in favor of vaping. And now let's discuss the big pro-vaping research study that everyone is talking about. So this study was performed by a bunch of research groups from several universities, such as Georgetown University, the University of Michigan, Yale University, and some health organizations like Vic Health Center for Tobacco Control, the Roswell Park Cancer Institute, and even the Truth Initiative. If you're familiar with some of those names and where this study was published, you're probably as surprised as I am that this is a positive study. BMJ's Tobacco Control Journal is notorious for publishing anti-vaping studies, and so have groups like the Truth Initiative, so this is really surprising. But let's get into the study. The researchers went into the study with the knowledge that while tobacco control policies are effective in reducing smoking rates, the impact is a little slow. They wanted to find out if a strategy of switching smokers to vaping could speed up the process, and if so, by how much. They used what's called a status quo scenario, which means considering what would happen if they did nothing at all, and what the consequences of that would be. So basically, what would happen if smokers didn't switch to vaping? They used smoking rate data up to the year 2012, which was before vaping became popular, so that they had a more accurate projection of how smoking rates would change if people weren't vaping. Then they compared those results with a substitution model, which is the exact opposite. What would happen if they did switch smokers to vaping to help them quit over the next 10 years? They also considered both an optimistic scenario and a pessimistic scenario. In the optimistic scenario, they considered current e-cigarette use patterns and published research. They found that by switching smokers to vaping, they would prevent 6.6 .6 million premature deaths in just 10 years, with a total benefit of 86.7 million years. In the pessimistic scenario, they considered a worst case scenario. For example, that vaping is even more harmful than current research indicates. In this scenario, they would still prevent 1.6 million premature deaths, with a total of 20.8 million years saved. Even under pessimistic conditions, they could prevent millions of early deaths. The researchers came to the conclusion that switching smokers to vaping could save at least 1.6 million people and up to 6.6 .6 million people from dying early due to smoking. That's a lot of people. And if you scroll down to the end of the study, you'll also find an interesting section called What This Paper Adds. The first bullet point there says, the 2014 U.S. Surgeon General's report suggested the need for a new strategy to more quickly end tobacco use, but a credible strategy has not been provided. This paper considers a strategy of switching cigarette smokers to e-cigarette use in USA to accelerate tobacco control progress. Now that's a slap in the face of, to the former Surgeon General who stupidly vilified electronic cigarettes in his report last year. And this is a hugely positive study performed by many reputable schools and well-known organizations here in the United States, which is important thing to note because regulators in the past have used the excuse that studies from other countries, like the UK, are not relevant to the United States, which is complete bull and makes no sense at all. But now what can they say? I'm excited to see how this research might impact the views of health organizations and policymakers in the future. Okay, and now something that I haven't done in a while, an old school vape review of the UD IGO W plus RDA. So one of my listeners, Dave, sent me an email telling me about a sale on jvapes.com for the IGO W plus RDAs for only a dollar. 
He knows that I like to do old school vape reviews, so he thought I might be interested, which I was. I had planned on buying one eventually to do a review, but Dave emailed me back a couple of days later telling me that basically the RDAs weren't very good and that he would send me a couple. I said, hell yeah, so now let's take a look. Okay, so this RDA came out sometime around late 2014. It's made of 304 stainless steel, has an old style three post deck, it doesn't come with a drip tip, and these originally sold for around $15 to $20 each. It comes in five colors, brass, stainless steel, rose gold, blue, and black. So Dave sent me three of these, all in different colors. Now what's interesting here is that the black top cap has much larger airflow holes, or the barrel, which I think is a mistake because the official specs and every review that I've looked up for this RDA shows small 2mm airflow holes. So starting with the barrel, let's talk about those 2mm airflow holes. You'll see that there are two on both sides, so this is really only a dual coil tank, even though they marketed it originally as being able to do both dual and single coil builds. Technically, yes, it can do both dual and single coil, but you can't close off one airflow hole. So you have airflow coming in and not hitting the coil. The airflow holes are so small that you could just close one side off with your finger if you wanted, but that's not a comfortable way to vape. It's a dual coil device. When you take the barrel off, you'll see the deck. This is about as basic as it gets. And this was actually pretty common back in 2014. There are three posts, which have tiny post holes. You can't do special builds in this one. I could barely get two 30 gauge twisted coils through the center post. You might be able to fit 26 gauge basic round wire builds in the center post, but I'm not sure. Something else I noticed about these posts is that they were drilled poorly. There were little pieces of metal that I had to push through on a couple of them. Okay, so the post screws. This has small Phillips head screws, and these are terrible. They strip easily and they can't tighten down. They constantly loosen up, and I have to keep tightening them, which sucks, because if you tighten too far, it pinches the coil wire and snaps it off. The juice well is pretty small and it fills up quick. It doesn't really hold much e-juice. Now let's talk about performance. I didn't think I would be able to fit Clapton coils in this, so I made some tiny 30 gauge twisted coils. Not the best coils for flavor, but the best I had time to do. The airflow is extremely restricted with a 2mm cap, but it's kind of a cross between a loose mouth to lung or a very restricted lung draw RDA. I don't like that airflow at all. I would have liked it to be much more restricted so that it would be a better as a mouth to lung atomizer. The flavor isn't anything special. It's much more muted than tanks of today, but the flavor is there. It's just not very good. And I also tried out the black barrel cap with the larger airflow holes, even though this isn't the barrel that you should get with this atomizer. And the flavor is the same as the other caps, but it just has much more airflow. The larger airflow holes make it impossible to mouth to lung, but uh, it makes it more of a slightly restricted lung draw. So there you go, there's the IGO W Plus RDA. Back in the day, this got a lot of really good reviews, and for only $15, it was pretty affordable. It's not worth anywhere near $15 today, which is probably why jvapes.com is selling it for only a dollar. And honestly, I have a hard time even recommending this for a dollar, unless you just want to own a piece of vaping history, because otherwise, you'll probably never use it. So thanks again, Dave, for sending those over. I always have fun going back in time and looking at old vape gear like this. And now let's talk about a little DIY project I've been working on, removing paint from stainless steel vape gear. Now I want to start by saying that I'm not an expert on metalwork. Far from it. I'm not much of an expert on any sort of handiwork, actually. I usually fix things around the house by jamming paper towels into them. But over the weekend, I decided to, to remove the paint from one of my atomizers, which is chipping paint really badly, and that's the Cosmonaut. Uh, first, I want you to know that this is a clone Cosmonaut. I don't want anyone to think that the authentic Cosmonaut has bad paint. This clone is actually the reason I don't buy clones anymore unless I also own the authentic version and I want to compare. I just don't trust the materials that are used in clones. But anyway, I had this Cosmonaut clone and the paint was just looking really bad and I didn't even feel safe vaping on it anymore because who knows if some of that paint was chipping off and getting inside the deck and then I was vaping it. It probably wasn't, but still. So unfortunately I didn't think to take any video or pictures of it before I sanded it down because I wasn't planning on talking about it on the show, but here's the atomizer now. I think it looks pretty good. It could probably be better, but my hands got so cramped up that I think this is good enough. After getting the paint off of the Cosmonaut, I thought this might be something that some of you might be interested in, so I decided to start the Icon RDA, which is another one of my clones. But like I said, I only buy clones if I want to compare it with the Authentic, and that was the case here. I actually got the clone Icon before the Authentic was even released. Uh, I wanted to see how close the clone would be, and in case you're wondering, it's pretty much an exact duplicate. It's crazy how fast and accurate these machine shops can clone things. So anyway, here's what I used for the Cosmonaut and the Icon. I have some grade 3 steel wool, which you can get from Home Depot or Walmart for less than $4 for a pack of 12. And this is very coarse grade of steel wool. If you want to be extra careful about not scratching your gear, you might want to get something finer, like number 2 or even number 1. Uh, but just know that it will take much longer. And I mean much, much longer. 
The thing about steel wool is that it scratches metal. Not large scratches, but you'll end up with a matte finish rather than a super shiny metal. If you want shiny metal and you don't mind putting in a lot of work, most people suggest starting with the finest steel wool or sandpaper that you can find and moving up in coarseness until you get the results that you want. Then you'll need to work your way back down to a very fine grit wool or sandpaper and then polish it up when you're done. And you want to do this over a workbench or something because the steel wool falls apart and makes a mess and you definitely don't want little metal slivers all over your carpet. You might also want to wear, wear uh, work gloves because you'll probably get slivers in your fingers too. And since little paint particles will be floating around, you should use a mask too so that you're not inhaling that stuff. After doing the bulk of the work with the steel wool, I moved on to detail brushes, which I got from Harbor Freight for $2. Uh, there's a vinyl brush, brass brush, and a steel brush, and they look like toothbrushes. I used the steel brush after removing most of the paint from the RDA to get into the little nooks, like the etch design, the lettering, under the top cap, and in the airflow holes. When I was done, I cleaned the RDAs by hand and then threw them both into the ultrasonic cleaner. The Cosmonaut clone came out looking great, in my opinion. The Icon seems to have a different kind of paint on it and needs a lot more work. I managed to fade it, but I couldn't get it to look like shiny steel. I'm sure with some work I can get it though. Um, I might rig something up using my drill or something uh, sometime later. So yeah, that's what I've done so far. Like I said earlier, this isn't something that I have experience with. So if you know of a better method, which I'm almost positive there is, uh, please let me know because I, I still have a lot of work left on that icon. All right, and the last topic for the show this week, how to refill the Enjoy pre-fill tank. I did a review of the Enjoy convenience system, which is basically Enjoy's vape pen kit, but that's what they call it. And it's one of my most popular videos ever. I think it's because it's a beginner setup that's extremely accessible because, I mean, you can find it at Walgreens and 7-Eleven. Um, or at least you used to, I don't know anymore. In my original review, I mentioned that other people online have said that they've been able to take the pre-filled cartridge or the tanks apart and refill them. I've tried many times to get it apart with no luck, but this weekend I was determined to do it, even if I had to break one of them apart. And I'm happy to say that I figured it out and I have done it now on three tanks. From what I read online, people have said that you should put the tank on a device and rock it back and forth while forcefully pulling upward. That part is true, but I found that it helps to get the separation process started with some pliers first. That inner part of the tank that screws onto the vape pen is glued to the tank. I wrapped some paper towel around the metal part of the tank so that I wouldn't scratch it and then held it tight uh, with some pliers while turning the plastic part of the tank really hard with my hands. That seemed to loosen up the glue a bit. You don't have to use a paper towel if you don't care about scratches, but I didn't want to scratch it. Um, some rubber coated pliers would probably be even better for this, but I don't have any. When you have that part done, screw it back onto your device. At first I was worried about damaging the vape pen by pulling so hard on the tank, so I put it on top of an old mech mod with an Ego adapter on top. But after getting the hang of the process, I don't really think that's necessary. If you do have an old device that you could use for this, I'd recommend it because over time you might damage the vape pen, but I don't know, maybe you won't. Anyway, pull up with some force, rocking it back and forth, and it'll pop right out. Inside the tank, you'll find some sort of wicking material, which looks like cotton. It sits on top of a plastic circle built into the tank. On that circle is four small bean-shaped holes that allow the e-juice to pass onto the wicking material and then onto the wicks on the base. You have to push some of this wicking material out of the way to refill the tank. I tried to fill it up without moving and the e-juice just sat on top of that cotton ring so it wouldn't go through. I don't think you'll be able to refill this without some blunt tip syringes, which you might have if you've ever made a DIY e-juice. It might also be possible to use a glass dropper tip to push e-juice into the tank, but I didn't try it. Once it's filled, push the base back into the tank until it sits completely flush on your device again. You'll probably want the wicks to sit directly next to one of those wicking holes, but I really don't know if it matters. And that's it, it should be good to use. Okay, so I have a couple of things to know after doing this and using the tanks again. First, I don't think you can do this indefinitely. One of the tanks that I did this with eventually got really loose. When I screwed it onto the device, the tank started spinning separately from the tank base. So I would worry about the tank coming off in my pocket. Another thing to note here is that Enjoy uses a very high nicotine e-juice. I believe it's 48 milligrams nicotine. So if you don't have high nicotine e-juice, it might not be as enjoyable. I also think that they use nicotine salt-based e-juice. So if you find that after refilling it that you don't like it as much, consider buying some high nic nicotine salt e-juice. So that's about it for refilling the tank. Okay, now for anyone who really wants to nerd out, I also fully tore down the base. Uh, there's a plug in the bottom that holds in the positive pin that pops right out. And this coil is a single spaced vertical coil surrounded by two pieces of wicking material. It looks like cotton to me, but I don't know for sure. I also don't know what the coil wire is made from, but I did a little bit of detective work. I compared it to various different wires and I'm pretty sure that it's 30 gauge wire. The inner diameter is two millimeters and it has about seven wraps with one short and one long lead. And if you put these tanks on an ohm reader, they read 1.44 ohms. 
So using an Ohm's law calculator, it looks like this could be either Canthal or Nichrome N80. It's definitely not stainless steel or nickel. I'm leaning towards N80 based on the specs. I only mention all this just in case you're wondering. I think this tank would be way too hard to rebuild uh, a new coil on. I bet some of you out there could, but personally, I'd rather just go out and buy a new one. All right, that's the pre-filled tank from Enjoy. Finally, I hope that helps some of you out. Okay, that's all I have for this week. You'll find the show notes for this episode on vapepassion.com. Just do a search for episode 89. If you want to support this show, consider donating to my Patreon page at patreon.com slash vapepassion. You can follow me on Twitter at vapepassion, and I'm also on Facebook. If you like this weekly show, please consider giving me a thumbs up on the video and subscribe to my channel if you're not already a subscriber. You can also subscribe to the podcast version of this show on either iTunes, Stitcher, or Google Play. If you'd like to get notifications of new reviews or of this show, you can sign up to receive my weekly email on vapepassion.com. And if you have any questions or comments, feel free to email me or leave a comment on one of my videos. All right, I'll see you next week. 